For the next one, we're going to invite the speaker from Magix. Actually, throughout all the years, I think advertisement world seems to be the most difficult part of doing business. And Magix is the all-in-one advertising platform, allows marketers to automatically manage and optim optimize their ads campaigns. So here we invite the VP of Sales and Customer Success, Chris. He will share with us after this. Nothing will stop you from crushing pet ads in 2020. Chris, please. Hey, hey, thank you so much for the intro. Hey. How's everyone doing? I see we have a nice crowd, so I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to the <laughs> session. Cool. Uh, yeah, first of, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. It's, uh, I, I really do start enjoying these, uh, these sessions. Uh, I love sharing my ideas. Uh, I love finding my tribe, uh, which I think is, is always happening on these events. Um, so I hope you guys find some opportunities to connect. Uh, first of all, to the Hyper SKU team, um, super, super professional engagement. I, I really enjoyed already the work with you guys. Uh, every touch one has been super professional. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. Um, cool. So, so yeah, my name is Chris. Uh, I'll dive a little bit deeper into into who I am, what I'm doing. Uh, let me quickly go ahead and share my screen. So, uh, so yeah, I think, um, I, think uh, I have a solid 20 minutes, so I, I really wanna over deliver in value and, and share some valuable insights. Uh, I think we're living in very, very interesting times uh, when it comes to the e-commerce space. I have the feeling that the D2C e-commerce space is maturing. I have the feeling that uh, many of the advertising platforms that we are using or we are using uh, are maturing. Uh, as a result, advertising becomes more expensive. Uh, cost per acquisitions are getting uh, uh, higher. Uh, the iOS 14 update obviously caused uh, a lot of mayhem. But it's very interesting for me to watch how in exactly these times of, of challenge, uh, there's tremendous opportunity. Uh, I, I, think, I think challenge always equals opportunity. Uh, I think if your business doesn't grow fast enough, maybe the, the challenge you're trying to solve doesn't hurt enough. Right, uh, and it's exactly in these times where the strong gets separated from the weak, uh, where the truth gets separated from from the fake. Um, and I would love to share all the insights that I've gathered uh, through my time here at Magix, through all the conversations we have with our customers and clients when it comes to specifically Facebook ads. But many of these ideas can be translated uh, against other advertising channels. Um, I would love to share some of the insights that I've gathered on what are advertisers doing in 2022 to stay ahead of the curve and to still crush it. We see tremendous growth uh, for many of these businesses. And I want to share some of these formulas or ideas or things that they have done uh, today. I want to become very actionable. I want to give you guys some clear action items to execute uh, and start executing on today. Uh, and uh, I hope I can really provide some deep value. Uh, first of all, real quick to me, uh, my name is Chris Petow. Um, like, like the title says, VP of Sales and Customer Success at Magix, uh, uh, born in the United States, but I grew up in Germany. Uh, I used to live in Abu Dhabi, uh, United Arab Emirates for well, three and a half to four years, uh, and then made my move over to Vienna, which is where I'm calling from right now, actually. Uh, I started university, uh, and, and then after like three and a half to four months, uh, I, I, I remember that evening, I just closed all my books, put them in the backpack, and, and I, was, I drove home and never came back to the university. Uh, I started making money selling websites. Uh, that was sort of my first hustle. Uh, I then funneled all that money into a print-on-demand uh, online shop. Uh, I was designing, I taught myself uh, Photoshop and, 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 and GIMP actually because it was for free, uh, all these different design softwares. And I was doing designs for the Middle Eastern market because that's where I used to live for four years. Um, and that's how I made my first money. That's how I became independent financially. Uh, I then, it was around that time where I was hanging around events just like this, uh, very often in the physical world. Um, that's where I met my future CEO, Yahaf, um, who at that time was running an agency. And uh, I sent him a Facebook message. Hey, I want to come work for you. I even work for free. I want to learn how the game works. I knew I'm going to be able to deploy that knowledge against everything I'm gonna do in the future. So yeah, next day I joined the agency and uh, I started as an, as an intern and then grew up to become vice president, client success over there at the agency, overseeing uh, all the clients and the media buyers and so on. And we started developing technology and, and software to help us grow the agency. We're always running into the HR issue, right? How can we grow uh, our operation without necessarily having to double, triple, quadruple our headcount 
So we started building technology. And in January 2019, we launched that technology uh, as, as a platform, magics.com. Um, and I joined over there. I started taking chat support and, uh, and now I'm VP of sales and customer success over there have 15 beautiful guys and girls working uh, in the department, crushing it. So super, super blessed. And, uh, yeah, what started, you know, as a, as a weekend project and now has become a team of over 170 employees. Um, we serve around 130,000 advertisers worldwide, primarily in the e-commerce, but we also have lead gen and other spaces in our customers uh, in our customer base. And uh, yeah, with time, we've now, we now have basically insights into 9% of all the Facebook ad spend that is spent every single month on that platform is running through the magic system, is optimized through magics.com. So that gives us tremendous insight, right? Every dollar spent on ads is a question you ask, and therefore you get an answer back if you have the tracking and call set up properly. So we get... Yeah, we get close to a billion answers every single month on what actually works in, in, in 2022. By the way, I, we have a chat here, so definitely, uh, definitely drop messages in here, um, and uh, I, I would love to, I would love to help uh, if any are possible. Now, what I would like to share is, you know, in speaking with those hundred thirty thousand advertisers out there, what are some of the best practices and concepts and ideas that we've learned from them, actually, from just listening to the market, and what actually moves the needle in twenty twenty two when it comes to Facebook ads? And the way I like to look at the world is. Uh, there's a certain thing that I want to master, right? I want to master building a profitable ad account. And I start thinking about, okay, what are the different variables I need to optimize to reach that goal? And when it comes to Facebook ads, they're really, and you guys might have even more here, uh, but, but in my experience, there are four main variables we need to solve for. We need to optimize. It's like a slot machine. And if you hit 777, you hit the jackpot, right? So what are the different spinning plates? What will the seven look like? And then I optimize towards that to then hit that jackpot to hit a profitable Facebook ad strategy or any other advertising channel for that matter. Um, and there we really have number one, data integration and tracking. We have strategy build, right? Building proper audiences and co. I, I know this prior speaker was talking about ABO, CBO strategies, right? That all dives into strategy build. And then we have the strategy management being, being, uh, 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 rigorous in optimizing your budgets and then content and ads and actual creative that moves the needle. Now, I want to specifically focus on data integration and tracking and content and ads. Strategy build and strategy management, uh, there's so much content out there and I, I, I could speak hours on this, uh, but I, I, I think that especially data integration and content and ads, those are the two big variables that will help you offset some of the consequences that came up with the IS 14 update. Now, real quick, what are these consequences, right? What is causing us trouble in Facebook after the IS 14 update? Number one, signal loss. Yeah, so we're back in the days out of 100 sales, we were able to see 90, 90 of them or 85 of them. We now only see 60 or 50. So we see across our customer base around 40 to 45% underreporting in terms of conversions. Then the next issue is at artificial attribution delay. So it's very, very common at this point that some sales just takes up to 72 hours to even be attributed to your campaigns and ad sets and ads. So you're optimizing your ad account based on data that is completely outdated. And very often we then end up pausing campaigns and ad sets and in hindsight they're profitable and, and, and when we made a mistake, right? Uh, and then the third issue is just the lack of performance breakdown. Uh, the prior speaker touched on that, right? A huge advantage that TikTok has there over Facebook at the moment, which is we are basically blind and we do not understand what country, what age, what gender within our campaigns is driving the results. And, and that hinders us from something that I love to do, which is optimizing for arbitrage, right? If I see low spend and high profitability on Germany, I want to build specialized strategies against Germany to tap into that arbitrage, to tap into that potential with a lack of performance breakdowns. It's becoming problematic. Now, what are some of the things that advertisers do to offset these issues? Conversion API aggregated events measurement, that shouldn't be a shocker anymore, right? I'm, I'm short here on time. We have only 20 minutes. So I, I, I'm going to share vocabulary and ways of thinking. Uh, uh, we can't go so much into actual micro execution, but conversion API aggregated events measurement have to be set up at this point. I think for the majority of you guys, this is probably nothing new. Uh, and then there's two more best practices that we're using religiously in our agency uh, that we're consulting our clients to do. And we've seen tremendous impact uh, uh, on those two things. Number one, 
UTM tags and leveraging Google Analytics, right? Uh, set up your UTM tags. There are a bunch of videos out there. Probably the, some of you guys are, or the majority of you guys have it already. Uh, set up your UTM tags, deploy them against all of your ads. There are solutions out there that make sure that all these UTMs are automatically deployed against all your ads. So you're not missing any ads uh, that are then not being tracked. Uh, and then use Google Analytics as an additional data source for your decision-making on Facebook. Yeah, because on Google Analytics, we do not have that attribution delay, that at artificial attribution delay. You see data coming in pretty much real time unless it's user driven, right? Sometimes a user sees the ad today, but buys tomorrow. So then there's an attribution delay, but that's user driven that we can't offset. But the artificial user de attribution delay, that is not, not happening on Google Analytics. Furthermore, on Google Analytics, you still have all the breakdown data. You can see what countries, what gender, what age is driving success on your, on your Facebook campaigns. Um, so that, again, a beautiful, beautiful insight for, to, to enrich your context when you make your decisions. No? Then another thing that some of you may have heard of this already, some of you may have not. So I want to put this out here, cloud tracking. Um, write down that keyword if you haven't heard of it before. Uh, there, there are countless providers out there, really. I mean, there, there, there's, there's a bunch of people who, who offer that service. Really look into that. In a world where the third-party cookies are not tracking accurately anymore, um, is there a way we can rely on first-party cookies to get to that data, to fill that gap of data? Uh, and there is, and cloud tracking is that solution. There are a bunch of su uh, suppliers out there who offer that service. Um, you can go out there, do the research, and definitely set this up. We see across across clients, the, the, the least amount of tracking uplift we're able to achieve, and those are one of our agency clients where, of course, we're religious about making sure everything is, is up to par, was 22% uplift in attributed, attributed uh, sales events in this case. You know? um, and you can see right here, yeah, those are some actual screenshots uh, of scenarios that happened in the last 48 to 72 hours, actually. Uh, and you can see here, yeah, 3.7 uh, for ROI uh, on normal website pixel data. And then after we did all these different configurations, we're able to report on a 5.99 ROS, or here even, even more drastic, 0 0.78. And actually after doing all these configurations, we're sitting on 3.79, right? So that makes the difference between killing an ad account or scaling an ad account. So if you haven't already, take a screenshot, research all these different terms, become a geek in it to offset these iOS 14 issues. And it's, 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 it's very, very fundamental. All of a sudden, you scale the right campaigns and the right ads. Uh, um, you're optimizing on actual real data. Uh, it, it'll help you navigate. Then the next thing we can address is, is creative strategy, right? Consumers and customers are still buying. Right, they're still buying. The issue is that due to some of the tracking issues, our creative has to overcome poor targeting decisions made by the Facebook algorithm, right? I'm, for example, in the market for white sneakers, but now I'm getting black leather uh, jacket ads, right? But if that ad is tremendous and strong and really speaks to me, I might actually make that decision and still buy. I was never in the market for Coca-Cola, yet I'm drinking, right? So strong creative can offset some of the issues that are coming up with tracking and accuracy. Now, the question is, what makes a great creative? And there again, I love to have variable thinking. What are the variables I need to crack to get to that effective creative, right? And here again, you guys can take a screenshot. This is a beautiful formula that has helped me a lot. When it comes to specifically Facebook, but same is true for other Facebook channels, what are the areas we need to optimize to get good creative? Number one, format, right? Is it a video? Is it a carousel? Number two, messaging. What is the story we're telling? Number three, the style. What's the colors we use? What's the, what, what's, what's the, uh, uh, what, what, is it a comic animation or a selfie video, right? So those are really the key variables to look for. And if you crack all three of them, you have a winning ad, you have a high conversion ad. And actually in the prior speech, uh, it was mentioned, um, it, going out there and see what other creators are producing and then reverse engineering that for your own purpose, right? Learn from the learn from the best, learn from those who are winning and deploy that against your own creative and ad strategy. This is a great framework to use for exactly that purpose. You can go out there, Facebook ad library, right? I think the majority of you guys know it, Facebook ad library, and just search for some of your biggest competitors or competitors you admire and see, okay, what formats are they using? What style are they using? What messaging are they using, right? If you look at magics.com, 
you will see we're religious on video and image creative or not religious. I mean, the data dictates the religion, right? Um, and, and, and on the style, we have a bunch of screenshots from our platform. So if you're a SaaS business, what are you doing with selfie videos? Right? Seems like the other SaaS players figured out that actual screenshot of, of the platform is way more effective. So this is a beautiful framework uh, to really deploy that. I want to share a couple of insights because I'm running out of time here. Concerning format, um, diversify and leverage all the different formats Facebook is offering you. Image, video, long video, carousel, VPA, and then uh, uh, use your naming conventions on your ad level uh, and document. This is a carousel ad. This is a video ad. This is an image ad and aggregate all the performance data to see what moves the needle. What I can see here, if I do that exercise within the blink of an eye, I can see that the majority of spend goes against image ads and carousel ads, but the actual raws looks tremendously better on medium video, right? So we should make it an effort to deploy some of that cash and pull it out of image and carousel, deploy it against medium video and scale on the back of that. Go to our creative team, medium length video. That's what we need, right? And it's beautiful to see how uh, a medium video performs better than short video in terms of ROS. Look at this. So it seems like in this case, in this specific case, that length seems to be a positive correlator in terms of performance. What are we doing? Not spending any money on long video. Could be a missed opportunity, right? So that's step number one. Step number two, let's crack ad messaging. What we're trying to do in our messaging is we're trying to drive, or with ads in general, we're trying to drive sales, right? Now, what could hold us back from driving sales? Customer objections, right? What's the best way to deal with customer objections to address them before the customer even thinks about them or speaks them out? Right? I tell this always to my guys. So what are the typical objections customers could have that hold them back from buying? And how can I, right from the get-go in my ad creatives, address those objections um, so, so, so we have smooth sailing for our users? And typically, it's one of those four. Uh, uh, it's either lack of perceived value, not the right product for me, not valuable for me, lack of trust, I don't know who you are, right? Lack of information, is there money back guarantee, free shipping? What's going on, right? And lack of urgency. End of month, I'm out of money. I'll wait till next month until I get my next paycheck, for example. Yeah. So some great examples that I've seen just recently of ads that incorporate all of these different possible objections in just one creative are these. And I actually, this one, we ran a couple of list tests. Uh, I know the client quite well, actually. And we ran that same creative with all different kinds of ad copy and this ad copy actually had a 4.35 ROI versus the others who operated on 2.5 to 3 ROI or ROS. Yeah? So significant uplift here. Um, and you can see here, yeah, search for children fashion. So this dives or into perceived value in a way. Then uh, uh, the choice for 10,000 happy customers, that dives into the trust aspect. You have a couple of bullet points that people want to know. It's luxury fashion so that it's authentic products. That's good to know. 30-day worry-free returns. That's good to know if I spend $1,000 on some Gucci sneakers, right? And then here, this is a bit of a lackluster approach, but inducing some urgency, limited stock. So when producing your next copy, when producing your next creative, please check the boxes and all those things. It, it will show in your top-line revenue. Last but not least, uh, and I'm hoping I'm not using too much time here, um, the next thing is creative style. And there's just a couple of quick uh, takeaways I want to share with you guys that you can actually deploy uh, in your creative strategy today. Number one, I just thought it's funny to say it, stand out by not standing out. Um, I thought it's funny because of the title of this entire uh, 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 speech series here. Stand out by not standing out. What do I mean by that? Study what actually works on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok and co, right? And what I love to do is I love, I follow, I, I probably follow the most meme pages out of my entire company. I follow the most viral video pages out of my entire company because those guys really understand how to hack attention in that platform we're operating in. And that is certainly a knowledge that I then want to apply against my creative strategy, right? Using a red circle in the thumbnail, these kind of things. I love it. So try to understand what really is viral content and what does it look like on your platform and try to hack it. Then next thing, maximize real estate. This almost sounds silly that I'm still saying it, but I see it so often. Um, people are running their horizontal creatives, right? 16 by nine. I scroll past this without even noticing your ad creative. Um, no discussion. We have to leverage one by one or four by five ad creatives. It really, really stands out and drives the attention. Massive uplift in CTR.
Then if you're running video ads, try to hack the first three seconds. Very, very often, um, I, I, I saw, for example, what was it? There was an Uber uh, for pet sitters, right? That was uh, somebody I worked with uh, actually not too long ago. And their video started with the logo of their brand, right? That is something that just, it screams ad, right? So what we did is we started to hack different beginnings. I told them, hey, you're one of the few brands who has the authority to use puppies in your ads. So we had puppies in pink towels and on the beach and all of that. Uh, and, and, and so we took our best video creative and built 15 different versions of how we started that video to crack the first three seconds, then drive the attention and, and, and drive up CTR and, and therefore expose more people to our content. Last but not least, because I'm already over time, I believe, is be conscious about your color uh, 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 scheme that you're using. Yeah? Facebook and Instagram are predominantly white platforms. Dark mode becomes more popular, so also be conscious of that. And um, running a white ad on a white canvas like Facebook and Instagram is, is just bad, is, is bad practice if you try to stand out. Um, so I love to use colors, color patterns uh, that, that are really disrupting on that white canvas. Um, so we use very often dark blue and these kind of colors, uh, definitely something, something to leverage. Cool. That's really it. We touched on a, some of the takeaways from data integration, content and ads. I hope it was, uh, I could be of value. Uh, and, and there were a couple of, uh, interesting insights. Um, I think that would be it from my side. No, I think I'm over. That's ton of information you provide, Chris. I love it. I hope so. I hope so. I <laughs> okay, so we have a, that's a lot of information. After you know, actually, after I checking um, Magic's website, I do have a lot of questions. But it would be nice if you can also answer the question for um, customer asking: Can Magic help the optimization of Google Shopping ads and Facebook catalog sales? So Facebook catalog sales, yes, uh, uh, we, we, we were, uh, um, we, we believe in focus. So we wanted to obsess uh, around really cracking Facebook as an advertising channel and establish ourselves as the market leader in that space. Um, and, uh, and now actually we have already, uh, uh, now we're going omni-channel, right? So our long-term vision, mid to long-term vision is becoming the omni-channel advertising cloud. So we're already building Google functionality, TikTok. We're going, we're going everywhere where you guys run ads. Um, uh, but at the moment, at the moment, we primarily support Facebook ads. We are on Google GDN ads. So that's something we do as well. Um, and now we're building some interactive dashboards. We're going to be able to pull all the marketing de uh, data from all different channels. Uh, our autonomous budget optimizer, which is a full hands-off uh, uh, algorithm to optimize all your budgets, is going to be, by the end of this year, latest. Uh, uh, it's going to uh, work on all the different advertising channels and optimize budget across all of them. Uh, so long story short, mid to long-term vision, we're going to be on all the key advertising channels that matter in 2022 and 2023. Um, right now, we're driving primarily on, on the back of Facebook. That's amazing. I think the question is uh, um, asking about, can you handle the block ads on Facebook? Blocked ads, you say? Yeah, I think that's how it means. Yeah. Big issue, huh? Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> number one, and 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 be be cautious, uh, be cautious there, and 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 ask really in a one-on-one -on -one conversation if you have the chance to speak with somebody who runs an agency or so on. But um, we have a backup infrastructure for all of our clients. We have multiple ad accounts in case one gets banned. We have other ones to fall back on. That's a must-have at this point. You need to hedge your bets. Um, uh, and it's also funny that sometimes performances are vastly different between different ad accounts, despite it being the same business. Um, so have multiple ad accounts uh, lined up just in case one of them gets banned. Concerning ads, um, very, very often, it is actually because there's actually a violation in the policy. Um, so, so become religious about studying the, the, the policy. Um, we have, uh, 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 we have our content service, content production service, and, and we just, we just, we just have it, have them, everyone who joins us in that service, producing the content, they have that as a Bible and they have to study it. 
and, and try to stay away from risky stuff, right? If there's an ad that shows a little bit too much skin, it should be kind of okay, but it shows a bit too much skin, try to stay away from that. Um, and then also monitor your user feedback score on your Facebook page. It's called user feedback score, I believe is the, is the final name. You can Google it, Facebook page, a uh, user feedback score. If that is, if that is below a four, um, you're under special watch and you don't want to be there. All of a sudden ads get banned faster. Plus next thing, if there are ads that get uh, 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 disabled and, and, and banned, uh, delete them right away from your ad account. You don't want to have the bad reputation. It's again, another thing that puts a special eye on you. Okay, got it. Okay, so we will have a follow-up email. And if you do still have a question for Chris and we will share a link like in the follow-up email, okay? I love it. Is it okay, okay. if I share my email? Thank you, Chris. I, I can share my email. Um, yeah, you can share in the chat. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's maybe it's helpful for you guys, every one of you guys, right? Definitely don't don't be scared to use and abuse my email. Uh, I, I would love to help <laughs> if I can. Okay, awesome. thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for so joining much. us today. Bye, thank you guys. You. Bye bye.